Dill says Miller had a gun when the chase ended, but bystanders apparently took the weapon before police could get it out of Miller's car. The weather forecast for Denver and vicinity, rain or snow showers changing to snow late tonight and ending Friday. The snow has already begun north of Denver. Driving is becoming hazardous, particularly to the north. It's been snowing hard in Broomfield for several hours. It's snowing between Golden and Boulder with blowing snow and poor visibility. The going is slow and slick. Otherwise, variable cloudiness tonight through Saturday. Colder Friday and Friday night, but warmer again on Saturday. The low tonight in the upper 20s, the high Friday in the mid-40s, the low Friday night in the low 20s, and the high Saturday near 50 degrees. At the KOA weather station in downtown Denver, it's still 33 degrees. This has been the night report for Thursday, March 6th. This is Dick McDaniel saying good night for the night report news team. Stay tuned for the CBS Mystery Theater, the Mutual Radio Theater, and our next news at 12 midnight. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Do you, like most people, resent and even fear the computer? Then this is a story for you. Because we must all learn to realize that no matter how much its cold objectivity turns us off, it is just as human as you or I, and as open to error. Whatever its output, it is only the result of what some fallible human being fed into it. A case in point is this story. Don't you worry about Sally, J.M. She may look like a reincarnation of Marilyn Monroe, but she's old tiger. Well, Josh, if you're sure... But... Oh, I'm sure. What do you mean, about another way? I'll tell you that as we go along. If we're going to do it, there's no time to lose. Our mystery drama... The $999,000 Error was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Jackson Beck and Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Today, it's a small world, isn't it? Everyone is in everyone else's backyard, right? Well, yes and no. Manila, for example, is still a day's travel by air from New York. And it's the other side of the world. That makes us virtually neighbors compared to how far removed a little town like Aleminos is from Manila. Even if it is less than 150 miles from Manila, all of this is only to explain how a thing like this could happen. I don't know if my wife foolish chickens go sit on eggs. Charang Magpari. Who is calling? He's not Ciso Esmillo. You sent for me? Ah, excuse me, lawyer Esmillo. I have been waiting for you. You will forgive me, but I'm a busy man. How can I help you? There has come to me a letter. Do, do you see? By the post. Oh, else... oh, he's from the United States. How can you tell? The stamp. There is a return address. Ah. You see? Charles Nadler and Braganza, lawyers. He's Filipino, the last one. From the United States. You can see. Why should an American firm be writing you, Jerry Malpali? Does, does it not tell you in the letter? I don't understand English. I cannot read even Tagalog. You wish me to translate for oh, you? Yes, please. My time is valuable, Charing. They will be explained. Oh, I, I am poor woman. I am a lawyer in a poor town. There must be a fee. Uh, how much? That will depend on what the letter contains. Uh, shall we say uh, 20 pesos? I have only 10. You can owe me the other 10. Give me. Over here. Uh, you have a sister, Elenia, in the United States. Ah, yes. Elenia. Seven years since I have heard from her. Oh. Sadly, she has died. <gasps> 
Ay, poor Elena. But, but she is older than me. How, how did she die? Uh, he does not say. But what he does say is that she has left you some money. How much? One thousand American dollars. Oh, how much is that in, in pesos? Well, at today's exchange, oh, about 7,200. 7,200? thousand two hundred. Oh, a fortune. When when may I get it? He says that a bank draft has been sent to the Amar Philip Bank in Manila, and you may get it any time. Manila? Oh, but that is so far away. Now, I, I cannot speak English. You, you must help me get it. I will be glad to assist. Uh, but there will be expenses. But, but, uh, how much? Perhaps three hundred. Oh. For the wife of an old friend, two fifty, two hundred. That leaves you seven thousand. I will sign the papers, and you will go to Manila and bring me back my fortune. I brought you here to my private office, Senor Esmilla, because it is a little quieter than on the bank floor. Thank you, Senor Garcia. Uh, please, have a seat. I have all your documents here on my desk. I trust there is no trouble. I assured my client there wouldn't be. Oh, no, 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 no trouble at all. Uh, but I hope you don't plan to draw out the entire amount. Why not? Well, I had hoped that the bank would be able to serve your client and... Such a sum of money in the... You would excuse me, in a small town like Arimides. Besides, on such short notice, even a commercial bank of this size would be hard put without at least uh, 24 hours notice to be able to pay out one million American dollars in cash. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, I, I hope I'm not catching a fever. One million dollars? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, that is what the bank draft that was sent to us from America is for. Oh, uh, uh, of, of course. That is as it should be. Uh, uh, let me ask you something, Senor Garcia. Oh, by all means. I hope I can help. I hope you can. My client, uh, the Senora Magpali, is in the midst of some difficult and delicate negotiations. She is contracting to build a huge resort hotel at Dagupan. This money is the basis of the financing. Ah, if she needs further financing, I'm sure the bank would extend loans at the prime rate. That was a matter that I had planned to take up with you once we have secured the property. <laughs> yeah, that is what this... <laughs> A million dollars is for... I will try to rush the disbursement through, but as I said... How much could I withdraw for my client today? Uh, well, I'm sure we could manage maybe uh, 300,000. Uh, would you want it in pesos or dollars? Uh, we are dealing with Americans. Dollars. Now, how quickly do you suppose we can get the rest of this cash? Wait, I... I could promise you another 400,000 in cash by, by, by Wednesday. And the rest of it by the end of the week. Splendid. It's a pleasure to do business with you. <laughs> yes. I, I will arrange for your 300,000 immediately. Do you care what denominations the bills are? Oh, not really. Although, why not keep it to hundreds or below? Uh, just... One more thing, Mr. Garcia. Ah, uh, si, Senor Esmilla. Get me $1,000 in pesos, will you please? Seven thousand two hundred pesos. One thousand American dollars. I can't believe such riches. That Elena would leave me such a fortune. Can you believe such good luck? Promise me you will help me with my fiesta. I want to have a big dinner for all my friends in Aluminios. When? It will take me two weeks to prepare. Two weeks from this Saturday. I will try to be there, Charing, but I may have to be out of town. <laughs> Ah, 
Savior is me. I was afraid you were going to disappoint us. Disappoint you, Senor Garcia? We have the third and the last installment ready for you in cash, small bills, as before. You are most kind. I also have all the papers drawn up for the loan. Did you bring your principal with you this time? Uh, we should have the Senora Magpari's uh, signature on those. Yes, I am anxious to sign them. But first, I have to take this last payment for the Americans. Once she has given them that, her title is clear. I will drive her up Sunday night to Manila, and then we can meet for lunch, man. Ah, splendid. I had hoped that today, but... Uh... Ah, wait. Monday will be just as well. I am so glad it will suit your plans. Now, if I can have the money, I hope there's no trouble for you. Oh, why should there be trouble? It's your money. <laughs> or rather, I should say the senoras. And it comes from the American bank. So as the Americans would say, it is no skin off my nose. <laughs> Senora... I was uh, directed here as the house of the Senora Magpari. I am she. You are Charing Magpari? Who else? I am sorry, Senora. I, I would have thought it would be... Uh, oh, excuse me. I am Senor Garcia from the bank, from Manila. Oh, if I had known, I, I am not presentable in the house. I... I, uh, I was actually looking for your lawyer, Senor Esmia, but I am told he is away. Is this true? Oh, yes. He has been gone since one, two, five days now, since Saturday. Ah. He had an appointment to see me on Monday. Do you know where he went? No. He said only it was for his health. Surely he needs to be here for your affairs. Don't you need to have the loan arranged for? Loan? What loan? I, I do not need money. Thanks to you, I am rich. Rich, thanks to me? And my poor sister. You helped me to get the thousand dollars. She left me so easily. Wh one thousand dollars? Yes. See, here, it is all here in the letter from America. Here, see, you, you, you can read English. I, I hope so. I wouldn't be much good at the bank if I... Uh, you... oh, oh, what is it, Senor Garcia? You, you don't look well. I don't feel well. Oh, uh, you, you want some water? No, 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 no water. Uh, tell me, the, the lawyer, Senor Esmia, he, he gave you only $1,000? Yes. Is that not what it says here in the letter? Oh, yes, that's, that's what it says in the letter, but, but I, I, I should... Oh, oh, this, this Senor Esmia, does he have a family? No, he is alone, poor man. Not poor, Senor, not anymore. Is there anyone who would know where he has gone? Sorry if I've kept you waiting, Senor Garcia. Oh, please don't worry. At least, not yet. This is Mr. J. M. Foster. Correct. Are you uh, you're calling from Manila, Senor? Yes, from the Banco de Amarpilid. We have been in receipt of a bank draft ten days ago from your bank, which we honored in the amount of one million dollars uh, to be credited to the account of the Senora Charing Magpiro. Oh, yes. Uh, when you placed your call, my secretary looked up the transaction and... Yes, sir. And? <laughs> we uh, sent you a draft in uh, Senor uh, Magpiro's name, all right, but... Uh... Well, there's a slight discrepancy in the amount. The uh, draft was for $1,000. Oh, I was afraid of this. I I am sorry, but I have some unfortunate news for you, Mr. Foster. Oh, no. No, don't tell me what I'm afraid you're going to. I have to, sir. When you transmitted the draft, someone on your side made a computer error. And added three digits, upping it. To one million? Uh, that is correct. Well, well, it's only an accident. Surely it's not too late. The money has already been disbursed, and the man who cashed it has disappeared. It is my sad but inescapable duty to inform you that I am very much afraid that your bank has taken a loss of 999,000 American dollars. <laughs> Thank you.
What is your first impulse? To say impossible? Don't. Because two years ago it happened in Manila in the Philippines. Truth again, stranger than fiction. Was the embezzler, or whatever you may choose to call him, caught? That is still a matter for the courts. We leave that to truth. And now go on to fiction. To imagine if perhaps he might have been caught. And how. Which we will leave for Act Two. When I return shortly. We live in a push-button world. A world where the machines are incapable of error. But how do we program the human being to make sure that he is infallible? We can't. The error has now been made. Three extra zeros added to 1,000 make one million. And an astute gentleman named Narciso Esmila has siphoned off the difference to become an instant millionaire. Will he get away with it? Excuse me, you are Mr. J.M. Foster? That's my name. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. I am Pedro Garcia. From the bank? Yes, a pleasure to meet you, sir. I hope you had a good flight. Nineteen hours in the air. Where can we talk? I have booked you into the Continental at Macari. I have a car waiting, and we can talk on the way. Then let's get on with it. You say you know where this guy Esmia is? I believe in Brazil. You believe? I, I, I have a friend who is, uh, shall we say, high in the security police. He assures me that they have checked, and Narciso Esmia was issued a passport and visa and flew there five days ago. Has anything been done to arrest him? Where? In Brazil. How can we do that? The man has taken off with almost a million dollars in the bank's money. Uh, not our bank, Mr. Foster. Your bank's money. What's the difference? Oh, I beg you to understand. We received a draft which we honored in good faith. It is not up to us to prosecute. Uh, Mr. Foster, I think you are in the wrong country. If you want your money, you will only find it in Brazil. And how the devil am I going to get it out of there? I suppose you would have to uh, extradite him. Yes. Or make a deal. Did your uh, police friend have any idea where this deadbeat is in Brazil? Uh, where else? Rio de Janeiro. What name's he using? Oh, he's own. He is quite brazen about that. You have any pictures of the guy? Uh, yes. We even have an address. The Hotel Maniana. Okay. That settles it. I'm going to your hotel to catch some shut-eye, but first I'm booking a flight to Rio and the Manana Hotel. It is a most unfortunate affair. Yes, you are too well right it is, Senor Garcia, and there's no way I can crawl out from under the fact that our bank made the mistake. But I can promise you one thing. One way or another, Senor Narciso Esmia is not going to get away with it. to see you, if you insist. So you refuse to admit anything, eh? Of course. My name, you are quite correct about that. And that you are a fugitive from the Philippines? Not a fugitive. I came here for my health. And I find I respond marvelously to the climate in Rio. You came here with a million bucks you stole. Now, I really must correct you about that. First of all, I deny I have the money you accuse me of taking. But secondly, if we examine your accusation, Mr. Foster, how could money that was freely given be stolen? You know it was only a mechanical error that made it available. I had no idea, of course, that there was error involved. But in any case, the money went to the Senora McParty. You know damn well it didn't. Prove it. I could. 
at enough expense that I don't particularly want to go to. There's a simpler way. I'll settle. Settle? I want to avoid publicity. I'm willing to pay for that. The bank made a mistake. We'll absorb it. 25 cents on the dollar. I don't quite understand. You can keep 250 less the thousand you so generously allowed Senora McFarley to have. Give me the rest and I'll fold my tent and silently steal away. No prosecution. Prosecution? <laughs> For what? I don't have to answer that. I think you do. First, what proof do you have that I have the money? That is still not with Senora McFarley in the Philippines. Second, whoever has it, who does it really belong to? Your bank extended the draft, no one else. Supposing the money is already spent, how do you recover it? If I can't, I could see you in jail. Really? Extradition? In what court do you sue? Who do you accuse, since you can't prove yet which of us has the money? Headlines, a bank that is a laughing stock in which no one wants to invest. <laughs> is it worth it all? I've made my last offer. Will you accept? Why should I? I hold all the cards. That's where you made your mistake, Esmila. Now that you raised my Yankee hackles, you're not going to get away with this swindle. I did not swindle anyone. Your computer did that. Isn't it nice to think that there is no real way to reverse the mistake? <laughs> Thank you, bartender. Get the chance, all right. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. <laughs> Do not listen. Hey, Jimmy. Jimmy Foster. Yes, that's right. Well, who, well take a good long look. Hey, Josh. <laughs> Josh, slow come. <laughs> you old son of a gun. <laughs> I haven't seen you since that cockamamie reunion. Captain Simon's dream. That. What was it, uh, six, seven, eight years ago? Oh, I shouldn't even have showed up there. Yeah, well, how come? Oh, you know. Occupational no-no. Keep a low profile at all times. Hey, you're uh, out of all that by now, Josh, aren't you? Standard answer, no comment. <laughs> you son of a gun. You kept on with it, huh? No comment. <laughs> what the heck are you doing in Rio? Is Helen with you? No, no, no. I'm here in business. Monkey business or legitimate? Well, how can you ask old straight arrow that? I'm still the same old cube, you know. Who took a bullet from me at Romagan so I could be first to cross the bridge? When do you call me in and ask me to pay up? Oh, come on, will you? It's all of 35 years ago, Josh. Why dredge it up? Because I still owe you one. I want to repay. If only I could figure out how. Well, maybe you could, Josh. Hey, uh... You still with the, uh... The organization? Uh, 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 no comment. Which means you are. Watch it. Yeah, all right, I will. I, um... Uh, I could use your help, Josh. Where can we talk? Okay, I'm going fishing tomorrow with a fascinating crew. You want to join us? I think I just might like to do that. You got yourself a date, old buddy. We'll save all the talk until then. So, uh, how do you like my crew? I'm not quite sure how to answer that. Huh? She's so beautiful, she stirs every red corpuscle in my old arteries. Makes me feel young again. <laughs> But then, she's so young, she makes me feel older than Methuselah. Ah, uh, don't let Sally fool you. She's not quite as young as she looks. I haven't robbed the cradle, J.M., not quite. Don't let Josh feed you any romantic double talk, Mr. Foster. I was the one who took one look at him and said, that's for me. Ah, uh, that's a pleasant fiction Sally likes to weave. <laughs> it's no fiction, just plain truth. Look, uh, Josh, there's no wind. We'll have to get out of the harbor under power. I can take over. So why don't you two old cronies go below and catch up on uh, whatever you have to catch up on? So you're left holding the bag, old buddy. Mm -hmm. The way it goes. We made the mistake originally. But I am not going to let him get away with it. Yeah. Maybe there is another way. I wish you'd tell me. Ah, uh -huh. you know us cloak and dagger boys. We tell as little as we can. What do you mean, uh, about another way? I'll lay it out for you right now. If we're going to do it, there's no time to lose. A daiquiri, please. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. 
sorry. Oh, please, please, please. It's all right. Oh, no, it's it all right. isn't. Oh. I, I dumped your drink all over your lap. Oh, to be drowned by an angel is fortune and happiness. Oh, you turn a nice phrase. My pleasure. Really, most of it spilled on the bar, not on me. Well, it doesn't excuse my clumsiness. Oh, it would be hard to imagine you as clumsy. Such an ugly word for so beautiful a woman. But you're very kind. I'm beginning to be glad I knocked your drink over. Not only my drink, but me, Sayora. Since my seat is a little damp, <laughs> may I suggest perhaps I can reorder and... Uh, have my drink and yours sent out by the pool? I think that would be a lovely idea. This was a most pleasant accident, Senora. Wasn't it? But uh, I think you are not alone here at the hotel? Oh, my husband, he has his own interests. Pardon? <laughs> I love all you Latin people so much. You couldn't possibly understand what drives us uh, Norte Americanos, <laughs> particularly <laughs> someone like my husband. I uh, don't know if I follow you. I hope you will, Senor. Um... Oh, I am so sorry. My name is Narciso as me, ah. but uh, they call me Pepe. I like that, Pepe. <laughs> my name is Sally, and what I do is my business. What my husband does is his. It bores me. Why? His only interest is money. How does he make it? He's a finder. A what? A finder. He's a geologist and a miner. He goes all over the world finding precious ores and oil. I don't know what. I suppose he's very good at it. We're rich enough in money, but not much else. How can anyone be in a town like Rio de Janeiro and not long for romance? I'd like to bring you some. I'm sure you can. I knew it the moment I saw you. Oh, oh but uh, not now. I see my husband coming. You better leave. How soon can I see you again? Trust me to arrange it. Now go. Hey. What are you doing out here, Sal? I thought you said you'd meet me in the bar. Oh, well, I just wanted to get some air. I just hooked your fish, darling. When and how do you want me to land him? So far, Ismila has gotten away with everything without breaking the law, except technically. Is Josh Slocum able to trump his ace and reverse the process? Can human ingenuity reverse the computer's mistake? And how? I shall return shortly with Act Three. The poison of greed is the most insidious in the world. Once you succumb to it, it is a fever that can't be halted. Narciso Esmila has been bitten by this fatal disease and all of the symptoms that go with it. Desire is blind, they say, and our friend Esmila sees nothing anymore but what he desires. Peppy? Yes, Sally? Come here, my darling. Only your calling me Peppy instead of Narciso would have given me the strength to move. Look. At what? Here we are on Sugarloaf Mountain, and far below us, Rio is sparkling like diamonds in the sun. Did you ever see anything more beautiful? Yes. What? You. <laughs> Only you could have got me up those incredible roads by bicycle. <laughs> I must be mad. I am a ghost. Ah, oh, poor baby. But I had to, you see. Had to what? Mm, weaken you a little. You're much too ardent for me to handle. I have to figure ways to keep you at arm's length. How much longer do you think you can do that? <laughs> Not much, I'm afraid. So... You still intend to keep on trying? No, my darling. I'm only human, too. But we must be careful. My husband may have little romantic interest in me, but he is very jealous of his possessions. Then leave him. Run away with me. <laughs> Could you support me in the style to which I've become accustomed? I think so. I'm a millionaire. How many times? Just once. Well, isn't that enough? I don't know. 
If the deal Josh is working on goes through, he'll be a multimillionaire. Maybe even a, a billionaire. What deal? Oh, I can't talk about it. It's all very hush-hush. It involves the government somehow. I'd like to know more about it. Where is he now? Josh? He's up river where the diamond... He had to go into the interior on business. Will he be back tonight? No, no, not until tomorrow. Well, then I'll have dinner with me in my room. No, I, I must have dinner with a, a, a friend. But uh, later, why don't you come to my rooms? When? Shall we say uh, 11? I'll be waiting for you. And I will be counting the minutes. <laughs> Now, look here, my gal, Sal. You sure you can handle it? <laughs> no, I see so. Don't worry, Josh. He's a paper tiger. Trust me to keep enough distance between us so neither one of us has to worry. As long as you come in on time. Okay. How long do I give you after he arrives? Oh, not more than five minutes. Just as soon as we get into the bedroom. Well, I'll be hiding out on the terrace. Mm -hmm. The moment I see you go inside, I'll slip in and out the front door of the suite. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll be sure to make plenty of noise with the keys so we can hear you come in. Check. And you make sure he hears the phone call before you get rid of him. I'll leave the bedroom door open a crack. Now, where are you going now? To get J.M. all primed? I don't want just to catch our little spider. I want to make sure we stick a pin in him. Josh. Ahoy, Josh. I'm on aboard, Jim. Let's go below out of the rain. Oh, brother, I'm soaked. Why did I have to drag all the way down to the boat to meet you? We're in the same hotel. I couldn't take any chances of our being seen together. Not now. Why? I don't want our little pigeon, little peppy, to fly the coop till we get the door slammed tight on him. Tonight, we are going to dangle that extra carrot in front of him. And by tomorrow, we ought to be ready to lower the boom. Uh, you get everything set up through a bank? Yes, I'm all set. Are you going to sit still for our jiggery pokery? Well, this one will. They don't use our name, but it's an affiliate of ours. What's it called? Banco Fidedino. It's just two blocks down from the hotel. Okay, we'll find it. All right, old buddy, we better scram. I've got a date with an angel. An angel? <laughs> you better believe it, Sally. She's going to pull your irons out of the fire, Jay. I'm just like you did for me 34 years ago. Josh, you don't owe me anything. All on the point of view. Anyway, by the time we're finished with this little caper, the board is going to be clean. Nobody's going to be owing anyone nothing. It's 11 o'clock, Josh. Okay. Here I go gently into the dark night. And here comes my lover breathing fire. Don't leave me with him too long. I don't want to have to belt him one. Leave that for me later. You wouldn't be so impatient, lover boy, if you only knew. Baby! Sorry. Come in. Come in quickly. Yes, yes. Oh, you are so Beautiful. Uh, All I want to do is take you in my arms. Uh, there, there isn't quite room for the moment. Roses. Oh, how lovely. Not half lovely enough for you. And champagne to celebrate our... Uh, oh. Well, uh, to celebrate. How sweet of you. Well, I I'll just put these in water. And I will own the champagne. Oh, no, no, no. We'll, we'll put it in the refrigerator to chill. I, I have some all ready for us. But it should be my champagne. Oh, later, perhaps. You brought me the roses. I bring the champagne. All I want you to bring me is you. Oh, oh, oh Peppy, what is it? Oh, for every rose, there is a form. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I was just lifting them to put them in the vase when, when you put your arms around me. There. Aren't they lovely? Mm, yes, yes. Oh, oh, Peppy, you're bleeding. That's the matter. It's nothing next to the way my heart bleeds for you. Oh, oh how poetic. I think that should lead us straight to the bedroom. The bedroom? Yes. That's where we have to go to find what we want, isn't it? Yes, but I didn't exactly think that... There we are. Champagne. Will you open it? Yes. Yeah, yes, of course. Now, I, I think I'll just turn down the lights and make it more romantic. There. How's that? Oh, that's more like <laughs> it. It sets the mood. This should complete it, I hope. Yes. Let me 
drink some fast to give me courage. What's that? Oh, Lord. It's my husband. I got to get out of here. Shh. There's no way. What are we going to do? I don't know. Shh. What is he doing? Dialing someone. International code. Where? America, probably. Listen. Well, oh, Brad, it's Josh. Yeah, it's still in Rio. Look, we're in business. It's great. Couldn't be greater. I just came down early from the camp. They're bringing him up in handfuls. <laughs> All we got to do is get him out, and we're billionaires, Daddy. Billionaires. Did you get the money? What? Well, you got to be kidding. I got to have it. Brad, I told you what, I need one million cold cash to pay off all around. For the divers, the government here, buy a helicopter to get to the boat, another boat to get us to the Florida Keys. But you promised. I know it doesn't grow on trees, but this is the biggest thing I ever ran across. For one lousy million, the money guy could come out clean, no taxes, 1,000%. Yeah. All right, keep in touch. But I tell you, and I kid you not, if we don't make it by tomorrow, this boat will never come in. It'll be long gone. He's coming in here. What am I going to do? Is he armed? Yes. He always carries a gun. Dios. Now, let me get the light. And if you value your life, stay right here in the bedroom. Uh... Hello, Josh, darling. I, I didn't expect you home. Well, I didn't expect to be back so soon. I, I thought I was bringing you the best news in the world, but did, uh, did you hear any of that phone call? Enough. Brad let you down again? Yeah, I didn't figure this time. The chance of a lifetime right up the flue. Oh, I don't think so. You didn't count on your clever little wife. I think I found just the man to bankroll you. Uh, Peppy, uh, come on in here and meet your silent partner, the man who's going to make you really rich. <laughs> you don't know how lucky we both are, Senor Esmilla. I hope so. I'm... Very nervous about committing so much cash in a venture I know so little about. Oh, but you're not committing it. You're just depositing it in a bank this morning as evidence of good faith. In your own name, your account. Then I'll take you to see what you're investing in and establish my good faith. Are the profits really so fabulous? Oh, just let us get the diamonds out of Brazil and the sky is the limit. If the government ever dreamed of the bonanza I uncovered, they'd move in and stop us dead. Oh, look at the quality of these diamonds. Just let me spill them out inside the lid. There. And that was brought up by just one diver. Diver? See, we mine these from the river bottom. A diver goes down with an air hose and blows a pit in the river bottom. In the clay deposits, we find diamonds. We found one bend where the clay washing down built up and got trapped. And we have mined it practically dry. But what we took out will make you and me rich for the rest of our lives. Thanks to my little wife. Yes, she uh, is an excellent businesswoman. Oh, don't I know it. I mean, another guy might have put the wrong interpretation of you and she being together last night. Only I know Sally too well to doubt her. Hey, wasn't it lucky for both of us she found you to come up with the cash we need to swing this? I guess I uh, ought to thank my lucky stars. I guess you better. Okay, J.M., everything all set? Yes. Papers all in order? Right. Then I guess I'll go break the news to old Narciso. Want to be in at the death? I think I'll wait till you spring the bad news. Then I'll come in and bask in the good. Okay. Here goes. Ah, uh, Mr. Smeager. Mr. Slocum, are we all ready to go up and have a look at the diamond mine, if that's what you call it? Well, I'm afraid not. I've got bad news for you. We've, um... We've been closed out on that deal. What? But what about my money? Oh, don't worry. That's being returned to you in full. Uh, this is your receipt, of which you have a copy. Thank you. But, wait, wait a minute. This is only for $1,000. I put in a million. Is that so? 
Well, perhaps it's just a computer error. It had better be. I have a scenery right here which state. But, but that's not possible. What isn't, Mr. Esmilia? This receipt reads only 1,000. But there were three extra digits on it when I deposited the money. Ooh, maybe you'd better talk to one of the bank officials. Hello, Senor Esmilia. You? Yes. We meet again. Is there some way I can help you? I deposited a million dollars in this bank this morning. I realize now it was a mistake. I want it back. You know, our bank once deposited a million dollars by mistake, and we wanted it back. I sympathize with you. It seems we have both been the victims of computer errors. But I had a receipt for my deposit. The uh, receipt reads 1,000. But I watched it being written by the bank official for one million. Do you remember that he changed pens? I lent him mine for the last three digits. What I didn't tell him was that it was a trick pen my grandson gave me for Christmas. With an ink that fades to invisibility. You crook! I'll sue your bank! By all means. Which will bring you to America where we can enter a countersuit. Do you want to spend the rest of your life tied up in courts with only a thousand dollars to pay lawyers? Or do you just grin and bear it? And figure if you didn't win. At least you didn't lose. I don't have too much sympathy for Narciso Esmino, do you? I think he got off lucky. But I must say, I'm glad he didn't get away with it, as the people in the real case on which this was founded still seem to be doing. I'll have more to say about that when I return shortly. Do you know why a joint savings account with your spouse, life insurance in each other's names, even joint ownership of your home could someday cause your family to pay thousands of dollars in extra taxes? For authoritative information and answers to vital questions concerning your family's financial security, you should read an important book from Dow Jones and Company called How to Save Taxes Through Estate Planning. In easy-to-understand, everyday language, it explains how to make sure your hard-earned assets are protected from unnecessary and crippling taxes. Vital information that every family should know. You can order this valuable book now and have it charged to your Visa, Master Charge, or American Express card by calling toll-free 800-228-5000. How to Save Taxes Through Estate Planning is only $8.95 plus $1 postage and handling. And if you call now, you'll also get free a 24-page companion financial planning workbook. So call now, 800-228-5000. Toll-free, 800-228-5000. At the moment I sat down to tell you this tale, the story on which it was founded broke again in the national papers. The $999,000 error. In real life, it is still tied up after over two years in legal spaghetti. I prefer our ending, which ties up the red tape and sees justice done, don't you? Our cast included Jackson Beck, Ralph Bell, Carol Titel, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. It, it, it sounds like, like someone at the door. At the front door. Well, uh, uh, one minute. Uh, all right, all right, I'm coming. I can just find my slippers. Who is it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who's out there? Who is it? Who, who's out there? Go away. Go away. Whoever you are, go away. Oh, the door. The box is broken. It's coming in here. Oh, God. It's coming in. Ah! Oh, dear Lord, help me. Help me, somebody. Ah! This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.